Disclaimer. Please check your playback settings. Ensure you are listening to this podcast at normal speed. Unless you want us to sound drunk. Then play at half speed. Thank you. Guys, guys, I managed to wrangle a guest star at the last second. Oh, now you show back up? Chief wasn't writing you about getting a guest? Uh, uh, I, I got Enforcer. Yeah, he's great. Uh, I've seen him on the news a lot lately. He's done some very heroic stuff. Oh. Uh- well, all right then. I, I, uh, I trust you, Dan. I guess we have no other choice. So when's he coming on? Well, yeah, I, I think he's downstairs. Let me go see if he's here. Okay. Where is he going? We're on the ground floor. Good evening, gentlemen. <gasps> Enforcer! Holy crap! Dan was right. My good friend Dan says you need a guest for your podcast. Uh, y- yes, um, sir. Yeah, um, I mean, if, if, you're not if you're okay too busy with it, just, it's only all. a few you questions, know. Mr. Enforcer, <laughs> sir. No problem, gentlemen. Ask away. It, wait, wait. We really should wait for Dan. Where is he? Should I run out front and grab him really quick? He just ran out front. Um, you'll have to forgive me, gentlemen. I hear someone in distress. I shall be back momentarily. Oh, oh my. I hope he saves them. Guys, guys. I just saw a. I just, uh. I just saw Enforcer fly off. Did, did did I miss him? Yeah, you missed him. He was just here. Oh, no. All right, let me go see if I can wave him down. Maybe if he comes back. Uh, you know what? If, if I can get him to come back, just go ahead and ask our questions, though. Let's... Wait, he's out saving someone. He'll be right. He's gone. <sighs> Sorry about that, but not to fret. I saved them. This feels familiar. Shut up, Tom. Sorry, Mr. Enforcer, but you did just miss Dan again. Oh, my. I was hoping to talk to him. We're good friends, you know. Oh, he did say to get started without him. I guess I'll go ahead and just ask the first question. So, uh, Mr. Enforcer, um, why are you? I'm sorry? I mean, um, why are you here? Yeah, where did you come from? Better yet, what are your superpowers? Oh, well, um, I can fly, uh, bulletproof, uh, laser vision, that's a cool one, uh, x-ray vision. Wait, x-ray vision? Like, you can see through things? Yes, and they're pink, by the way. Huh? Huh? Um, hmm, gotta go. Yeah, uh, I gotta go save anybody. What, what, what could he have possibly meant by, uh, that? I don't know what could be under where under there i'm i i have no idea hey guys i'm back how did it go yeah, yeah let's, let's watch, watch a movie, movie guys, guys. we're taking jimmy stewart to the shootest john wayne to true grit Robert Duvall to Days of Thunder. Tom Cruise to The Mummy. Russell Crowe to The Quick and the Dead. Gene Hackman to Superman. Fly into the hero's journey with Tom, Dan, and Josh and race faster than a speeding bullet towards the superhero films of superhero films, Superman! You will believe that a fire pit can fly! Good evening, bots and listeners, and welcome back to another super episode of the Fire Pit Podcast. I'm Josh, superhero name Numbers, and tonight we cap off our fifth journey. Wow, five already. It's hard to believe we've been at this for, what, now, 20 years? Um, uh, um, oh boy, uh, Josh, buddy? Yeah, Numbers. Uh, we haven't been doing this a year, We've not even a year yet. 2020 time. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that that tracks, yeah, yeah. Anyways, fifth journey done, and in a couple of hours, we're going to be on to our sixth and final journey of season one. Yes, this show has seasons. But first, we have to get back out of the Old West, and hopefully out for a while, and move to tonight's film. And as per our rules, we've taken an actor or actress from our last film and moved them on to this one. And to tell us about who we're watching and what we're watching, I'm going to send things over to Thompson. Well, thank you, Josh. Tom here. Hero name, a Funny Bone. <laughs> stop it. Stop it. Yeah, oh, that's Rito. That's just stop. 
And last week, we watched Russell Crowe go from dumping exposition on Tom Cruise and the mummy to dumping bullets into revolvers opposite Gene Hackman in The Quick and the Dead. And tonight, we get to watch Gene Hackman go from the deadliest shot in the West to the greatest criminal mastermind of his time in 1978's Superman! Also starring Margot Kidder, Ned Beatty, Christopher Reeves. By the way, Christopher Reeves, one of the most iconic roles in all of cinema. Seriously, we'll talk about some more of that as we go into this film. But to give us a rundown of the film tonight, I now turn things over to Enforcer. Huh. That's interesting. Huh, what a coincidence, that name. Hmm. Dan? Thank you, Tom. Enforcer here. Secret Identity Dan. And as mentioned, tonight we are watching 1978's Superman, directed by Richard Donner, starring then unknown, completely unknown actor. He actually just did a bunch of Broadway shows or like off-Broadway shows at the time. Christopher Reeve. But he was surrounded by known Actors as, such as Gene Hackman, the one and only Marlon Brando, and Margot Kidder and Ned Beatty. The music is by John Williams, who composed one of the most iconic theme songs in cinema. The Superman theme is right up there with the Star Wars theme, with the Jaws theme, with the Indiana Jones theme. It's just so recognizable to a character that... I wonder who composed all of those themes. Anyways, the release date was December 15th, 1978 in the United States. It had a budget of about $55 million and a box office return of, at the time, $134 million in its first run and then ended up making $300.5 million overall. So yeah, it made its money back. It's 94% fresh on Rotten Tomatoes and has an IMDb score of 7.3. It was, at the time, the most expensive film made up to that point. In fact, if you read or watch any documentaries or any literature on the making of this movie, it shouldn't have worked. It actually did have some like behind-the-scenes kind of drama. The producers, the Salkins, weren't getting along with um, Richard Donner. The production was taking longer than expected because Donner wanted to film both one and two at the same time. It was going over budget. It's just, uh, it was a mess. Normally when you hear the kind of stories that came out of Superman, it's like, this is heaven's gate. Like this isn't going to work. And uh, it worked. It worked well. To this day, even with the massive success of the MCU and with the Hollywood machine now churning out a superhero film almost every year, almost every couple of months before the pandemic, this film is still the benchmark and the bar for which almost all other superhero movies are judged by. And even more so for any new Superman movies that get made. Man of Steel wasn't a flawless film by any stretch of the imagination, but a lot of the criticism of Man of Steel was basically, he's not Christopher Reeve, I don't like it. And that's not fair, really. I mean, because Christopher Reeve was so good in this movie as Superman, it's just forever. I think 100 years from now, when they, if they make another Superman movie, the actor who plays him is still going to be compared to Christopher Reeve in this film because he was so perfect for the role. But yeah. we'll talk about that in a moment. Yeah, I've got but, something to say about some of those things, but that's for later on. But yeah, it's it's insane how iconic this film has become in the history of cinema. Yeah, and every mm -hmm. single actor since then who's played Superman, either on the small screen and on television or on the big screen, is compared to Christopher Reeve. And some of them, like Brandon Routh and, Man and Superman Returns, tried to emulate Christopher Reeve, and that was almost to a fault of the movie. Like, it was just like, almost like he didn't make the role his own. And then Man of Steel went in the complete opposite direction of the Christopher Reeve-style Superman. And, but that was also a detriment to the film. Like, that was, like, a lot of people's criticism of Henry Cavill's portrayal of Superman is he's not Christopher Reeve. <laughs> and and that's not necessarily fair. I mean, I thought Henry Cavill was a fine Superman, just like I think Christopher Reeve is was a fine Superman. But honestly, I mean, a Superman was written and portrayed in the comics in the 1970s and the 1960s. Christopher Reeve perfectly brought him to life on the screen. He was Superman. And not so, just pulling this from like the, the 70s era, but I think that Christopher Reeves got Superman on like a fundamental level in the same way that Mark Hamill got Luke Skywalker. I, I think he understood Superman. So when he was fitting into that role, he understood who the character was and who he was playing. 
at, like I said, just a fundamental, very low level, basic mm-hmm. level. Did yeah, I say yeah. level enough there? No, so, I think you could give us one no, more you, level. You, yeah, give us, I think give us one more level. Level, 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 <laughs> level. Excellent. Well, now I think we're on the level. And to level it out, I'm considering I mean, he was a relative unknown when they picked him, too. So it's it's most films these days, I, you got to go with a name. But with Superman, it's like, that guy, right there. The, well, with the, the spit curl and the glasses. That's a yeah. Superman. And I kind of disagree. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Dan. Well, I was going to say, and at the time they were making this movie, they were putting a lot of money behind this movie. I mean, they put $55 million behind this movie, which was a lot of money in 1978. It's a lot of money now, but it's a, like that was a lot of money in 1978. Mm-hmm. So they're putting a ton of money behind this movie. Mm-hmm. And the producers in the studio kind of wanted a bigger name actor to role. There were names like banted about at the time, like Robert Redford. Dustin um, Hoffman. And Dustin Hoffman. Like they were like, those guys need to be Superman. And, and Donner at the time was like, he wanted an unknown to be Superman because he didn't want you to see Robert Redford in a Superman costume or Dustin Hoffman in a Superman costume, which is what the movie would have turned into. Mm-hmm. He wanted you to see Superman. A lot of directors that do superhero movies now, if they do them right, a lot of them uh, want relative unknowns to be yeah. in that role because they don't want to see, like when they were making Wonder Woman, there was a lot of actresses banted about a Wonder Woman, like Angelina Jolie and stuff like that. But, they were like, oh, I don't want to see Angelina Jolie in a Wonder Woman costume. You need to see Wonder Woman on the screen. So yeah. that's why Gal Gadot was hired, or Gal Gadot. I don't know how to pronounce her last name. Gadot. Uh, you got Gadot, but, yeah. yeah. But, but uh, we're yeah, waiting Dan, for Gadot. <laughs> trampled all over what I was going to say. Sorry, Josh. But, you go ahead. <laughs> we're excited about this film, I was, guys. I, I, I was going <laughs> to say, uh, yeah, you could tell when Dan gets excited about a film. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, Tom, I... Uh, Agreeing with Dan, disagreeing with Tom. Big surprise there, right, guys? Yeah, it's like I don't think that uh, it's really a big thing to hire a uh, known actor to play a superhero film. Like, I'm going to reference Black Panther. I mean, Chadwick Boseman, when he was hired on to play back Black Panther, he was an unknown. All things considered, I mean, Michael B. Jordan would have made an amazing Black Panther, but he was a known actor at the time. You know, he played in Creed. He was Johnny Storm in the terrible Fantastic Four reboot. Yeah, Robert Downey Jr. was a name, but he definitely wasn't an expensive name. Oh, and I no, remember, no, no. Yeah. Also, he was remember, trying to rebuild his career at yeah. the time he was cast as Iron Man. And then when they uh, cast Tom Hiddleston and Chris Hemsworth as Thor and Loki, I remember reading an article at the time like, what is the MCU thinking? Man, they just want this thing to fail before it even gets off the ground, hiring Mm -hmm. two unknowns. Captain America was the same way. Chris Evans, before getting cast to play Captain America, mostly played dickheads. He mostly played jerks in almost all of his other movies. He did so, have Johnny Storm under his belt. Interesting yeah, how that works. But, actually, but Johnny Storm, but Johnny, his Johnny Storm was kind of a jerk. Like, yeah. So, like, he always, almost always played a jerk. Or, mm-hmm. it was like, when he was in the teen movies, he played the teen jock jerk. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And all that. The, so, the one, the narcissist guy who was full of himself. Yeah. But Dude, I, I think remember... we also have, we have Superman to thank for that. Cause again, yeah. Superman set the bar it's like this is what you do these are the rules you get like you get your kind of like unknown to be the hero you get your named actor to be the villain with gene hackman Mm because that the studio's like okay you're gonna have like what who's this guy reeves okay you can have him but gene hackman you gotta get him and so you find a way to slice the pie to you know Okay, this guy who looks like the hero acts like the hero, but everyone knows who the villain is. This is yeah. our act. This is our guy right here. They did. They, they kind of did that with Superman Returns. You got an unknown to play Superman, but you got Kevin Spacey to play the bad guy. Yeah, yeah, and again, to f- mixed results, obviously on that mm-hmm. one. But honestly, I mean, an argument can be made. You know that there hasn't been a great Superman movie since either this one or two depending on who you talk to which one they like more because a lot of people like two more than this one and some people like this one more than two i think they're both great movies for different reasons Mm -hmm. but um you can make the argument that there hasn't been a universally loved superman movie since the 70s and the early 80s oh yeah (laughs) before we get into expectations i have a question for you guys have either of you seen the superman 2 richard donner cut yes no i own it actually how is that compared to the uh, other edit? I don't know. See, a lot of people think that the Donner cut's better than the Lester version that we all kind of know. I I don't like the ending of the Donner cut. 
and I don't know if it's because Donner didn't actually get to finish the movie, so they just cut it as best they could, or if it's just I'm so used to the Lester ending. I mean, have you ever seen it, Josh? I have not, no. Okay, well, the the ending kind of has a... Uh, maybe I'll talk about it on Final Thoughts when we actually watch the movie, when we have the uh, quote-unquote spoiler alerts. But um, there's a part of this movie that I've never been a big fan of, and the Donner cut does it again. And I, I just think it's dumb. Like, I just... Oh, I know the part you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, it, the Donner cut, like the Donner cut, does away with the amnesia kiss, like that that was in Superman too. Like that's how Lois Lane forgets he's Superman. Is yeah. apparently Superman kisses her so hard he gives her a concussion and just she forgets. <laughs> so Dude, there was uh, so many off the wall <laughs> powers, like the cellophane S. Yeah, like... the, yeah, the cellophane S and all that. So it's like, well, that's a nod to the golden age. I mean, Superman got a new power every issue. So and even in the old like uh, George Reeves TV shows, like in an episode he got the power to walk through walls. And in the next episode, like, hey, can't you just walk through that wall? Yeah, so, I mean, I'm not going to fault it too much. Also, it was, like, it's, it's unfair to compare Superman movies or Superman stories written, you know, 40, 50, 60, 70 years ago to Superman stories now. Mm. Like, it's just, it's, it was a different time. Yeah. So, I'm not going to fault it too much for the 70s Superman not quite meshing now with, with this current world. Which is funny, though, because the 1970s one was kind of the same boat with, in regards to, like, say, the old 1940s, 1950s George Reeves Superman. Because that was, this Reeves, was kind uh, of a. Re, thank you. I, I keep thinking Christopher Reeve, George Reeve. I, it's like Kroger. You, you, the S is, is invisible, but there. Yeah. You have to acknowledge it. We're Midwestern, Josh. We have to. The S yeah, is Yeah, actually, there. I got that backwards. It's George Reeves. Yeah, ah! well, yeah it's Reeves and Reeve. Yeah, ah, see, Chris correct. Reeve. So I, yeah. you got it right. I got it wrong. Ha! I'm... It's on the internet. It's it's official. Josh, <laughs> it's acknowledged. I'm right. And the internet never lies. I'll um, edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> right, no, again, this was like, we talk about... Um, now I want to call him Christopher Reeves. Christopher Reeve being like the penultimate, like who we look at when we think Superman. I mean, he was the ultimate Superman. Like the, the penultimate would be this number two Superman we'd look at. Fair point, Josh. Thank you for correcting the English major. We, well, we you, look you at... gotta remember last week you defined it for me. <laughs> right. He's, he's right. He's it's right. been a long day, Josh. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, okay, I will now acknowledge, Josh, you are right. But, no, uh, Christopher Reeve was coming off of, like, the legacy of George Reeves in this film. Like, everyone's like, how is this guy going to be George Reeves? Come on, that guy was Superman. I grew up with George Reeves. He was Superman for me and everything else. This 1970s version was a, for then what Man of Steel was for us now, like Superman in these dark and grim and real modern times. Superman's this corny guy from the simpler 1940s. How can right. he live and exist in these like times when we have pimps and economic depression and villainy everywhere in the 1970s America? Yeah. Oh, the, Those same things were kind of part of the storyline of man of steel is how can superman exist in a world where we're all cynics now mm -hmm. where we don't seem to be surprised by anything or in and everyone's so negative well that yeah. goes back to me a saying everyone's a cynic everyone's got cynic or we're all cynics now cynicism is just rampant mm -hmm. and one thing i didn't like though was everyone lobbied or lobbed grenades at man of steel because of all the quote-unquote product placement in the movie like there's so much product placement in the movie and one, it was supposed to try to show the real world with Superman in it. So we would recognize the brands not to go shopping for them, but because that, that was just part of the world. But um, if you watch this one in Superman 2, there's a shit ton of brand recognition in that one, too. I mean, in the second one, he throws a Marlboro truck at Zod. <laughs> or no, he gets a Marlboro truck thrown at him. I'm sorry. So either way, someone gets smashed by cigarettes in the sequel. Someone gets tossed into a Coca-Cola billboard in the second one, too. Right, yeah. right. And there's there's some product placement in this one, too. Because of the same thing, Richard Donner wanted to show Superman in the then real world of the 1970s. And I think that adds to the film. Yeah, yeah it's, it's we're looking back at the dark and gritty times of the 1970s. and But mm -hmm. showing that Superman is relevant no matter what time you're in. We all need Superman. Whether 1978, 
2020, dot, 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 et cetera, et cetera. And just before we get to expectations, I do want to say to the audience out there that if you enjoy the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and even if you enjoy the DC EU, or if you just like superhero movies in general, you can thank this one being the runaway success that it was. That's why we have superhero films to this day. They're all measured to this. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, up until Iron Man. Yeah, but I will give my thoughts a little bit more on that once I give my expectations on this film. But before we get to your expectations, we got to get to Josh's expectations first. So, Josh, what are your expectations going into this film that we haven't covered already? Speaking of segues. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I've seen this movie, obviously. Um, I grew up loving these Superman movies. Like, uh, I'm a product of the 80s. So, uh, I just we, we growing up, you know, it's like you say that this was a box office success. We have to thank all of this for or everything we um, modern cinema for this movie, which I totally agree with. But at the same time, it's interesting how modern Hollywood treated that because, I mean, it's like I grew up with this movie. I know what to expect from this movie, um, but it didn't. Of course, I, I, again, this was 78. I saw it a few years before I was being born, but I grew up with Superman one through four. I grew up with Batman 89 and the subsequent Batman films that came out during the 90s. Kids today just don't know how good they got it. For this movie, for tonight, getting back on t- topic, um, my expectations for this film is I'm just going to enjoy it, be able to watch it with you guys and enjoy it with you guys, and maybe take it, see if I can pull anything out of it that I wasn't able to from a previous viewing. It's like I said, I've always seen this movie, and I don't think I've actually sat down and objectively watched it in 20 years or so. I know what to expect watching this movie. I know the movie beat for beat. So I know exactly what I'm going to get out of it. But I just, I hope I can pull something else out of it that I didn't see before. Kind of like we did with Starship Troopers and some other stuff that we've identified out of movies that we have seen before. So my expectations are, I don't know, I want to say high or low, but I know what my expectations are. Tom, what about you? Well, I'm going to start with my expectations with a question to both of you, starting with you, Josh. When was the last time you saw this movie? A couple years. I watched it very recently with my son in 20 years or so. Um, oh. And when I say recently, within the past five years. I mean, he's only nine, but... Okay, so. but you still had adult eyes yeah. watching it. But still, I, I do like that whole, like, you had your son with you. That's adorable. Oh, that's kind of how I saw my with my dad. You know, it was on TV, obviously, but yeah. I, that's how I saw it. Oh, good. What about you, Nigel? Uh... How long ago was it? A year or two ago, right after Justice League came out. Because Justice League reincorporated the classic Superman theme whenever Superman was on screen. Mm-hmm. So it got me pumped to want to watch. After I watched Justice League, I, I watched Superman 1 and 2 again mm-hmm. just to watch them. So it may be about, Josh, I went to go see Justice League with you. How long ago was that? It's 20 years now? 15? Oh, yeah, something like that. 2020 oh time it feels like it, it was it, forever ago yeah it, it was in the before four times yeah, yeah. It, it was a long time ago it feels like but it's okay i mean it's been at least a year tom it's been at least a year since i've seen it okay but it feels okay. like 20 yeah but okay so we're all going into this with the dull eyes because i saw it about uh not even a year ago um, in the big screen, it was at uh, Studio 35 here in Columbus. And I, yeah, if you ever get a chance to see it in the big screen with a bunch of other geeks, I recommend it. It's always a joy, especially when you get to have a beer and watching it, too. It's like, oh, yeah, yes. I bet. Oh, it was so good. But the film itself, yeah, it's 1978. I, I'm looking past the special effects. They were great for their time. You can't fault them for that. Now, the storytelling is definitely different from uh, how we do things now. That's not to its detriment either. I'm not going to lie. Honestly, my expectations are I'm going to have fun watching it with you guys. That is exactly it. I know this film. I know what's going to kind of disappoint me, what's going to, like, wow me, what's going to impress me. I mean, from a technical standpoint, the fact that this film succeeded was kind of a miracle. The, The details that they went into making this. I mean, Gene Hackman, we know, was, like, the star of this film, but... um. 
Chris Reeves or Chris Reeve, excuse me, was an unknown. They just plucked like, hey, you look like Superman. Um, Margot Kidder before this had been in a few films. My personal favorite, Black Christmas. I loved her character in that film so much. I hope one day we can watch it as a Christmas film or whatever. But all the details in this, and for anyone watching that maybe are like still on the fence, this film, it nowadays we're impressed when a superhero film gets nominated for awards or anything like that. I mean, we have to basically champion for it. But this film, this was nominated for a lot of awards. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, uh, I don't know if you mentioned it, Nigel, but um, this was nominated for three Academy Awards. Um, best film editing, best music, and best sound. Received special achievements for special effects. Um, elsewhere, Chris Reeves won best newcomer at the 32nd British Academy Film Awards. Hackman and a whole bunch of other people got nominations. It won Hugo Award for best dramatic presentation. Uh, won best sci-fi film for the Saturn Awards. John Williams got the Golden Globe. Or oh, excuse me, he was. No, no, he. I think he won the the Grammy Award for best score for soundtrack. So he should have. Yeah, he deserved it. And so this was an award-winning superhero film, which even today is almost impossible you get maybe on nod. Yeah. yeah you get on nod for maybe like special effects that or costumes well that's tom, it tom Josh. unless it is a, a spectacular standout superhero film unlike any others the best of its genre and you guys know which one i'm talking about the academy award winning suicide squad right right deservedly so I'm throwing things at my microphone now. <laughs> so I, I think this, for my expectations, uh, instead of expectations, I'm going to try to sell our listeners or the why to at least give this movie a chance for themselves. Uh, this, I mean, come on, this film uh, was um, in 2017. It was selected for preservation by the U.S. Library of Congress National Film Registry. It is in the Library of Congress. So I'm looking forward to having fun watching a superhero geek film with my superhero geek friends, Asterix, and we're going to walk away enjoying ourselves unlike we did with Batman v Superman, where we just felt dirty and <laughs> um, could not shower ourselves off enough. Nigel. Well... I think I've listed a bunch of my expectations already in our initial ranting and raving and how excited we were about this film. I mean, like you guys <laughs> just said, you can tell when Dan's excited for a film because he doesn't shut up. But um, I'll try. So I'll try to keep this brief, but I've never really watched it with the eyes of this. This is where the superhero craze starts. Like Josh mentioned it. Kids today have no idea how good they have it. They get a cool ass superhero movie every well, before the pandemic, pretty much every six months. Now they're going to get four a year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, and, and, God. Yeah, and, and like they're the new Western now. I, like we watched yeah, a lot like... of Westerns over the last couple of journeys. And Hollywood made Westerns because they were cheap and because they were easy and because they had a massive return on investment for them. And right now Hollywood's doing superhero movies for the exact same reason. They're not necessarily cheap. Like, I mean, like. Justice League or whatever costs like 300 some odd million dollars to make, but they make a shit ton of money too. So, but I kind of, my expectation for this film is somebody showed me on YouTube once scenes from Man of Steel, but with John Williams score instead of Hans Zimmer. And I love Hans Zimmer's score. Don't get me wrong. Hans Zimmer's awesome. But John Williams score for Superman is just so iconic. It's mm. just... That those opening bars that dun, 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 dun. Like, you know immediately what's going to happen. Like, on my world, it means hope. Superman's coming. Like, that, that's the theme. Someone showed me scenes of Man of Steel with John Williams score. It's actually a better film. <laughs> yes. I don't know what, like, it's a better film with John Williams score. And so I think I, I want to see this movie with adult eyes with you guys. I'm really looking forward to seeing it. But I also kind of want to get back to my childhood with this mm -hmm. movie. Because this movie is my childhood. Yep. Like I, I watched this movie so much growing up as a kid. Mm -hmm. This one and the second one. So I'd have to say my expectations are high, but I've seen it before, so I know I'm gonna be pleased. 
but I want to I want to watch it with both childlike wonder and adult thoughts. I get, I don't I don't know how else to say. Adult adult, adult, adult thoughts <laughs> sounds dirty. So wait a minute, hold uh, on. Uh, yeah, well, hey, I, mean, yeah. no, I get what you're saying, Dan, because I I. I I wanted to actually add in a little bit of extra to mine, but I, it flows so well with what you just said. This movie has that childlike wonderment of Chris Reeves, the montage scene of him doing the savings. But I want to say last time I watched the movie and I was as an adult, like Dan or Tom mentioned earlier that I want to say that I saw, thought that the story overall story was bad. And I was like, and then when they rebooted, uh, this verse uh, Superman in Superman Returns, they basically rehashed the story from this one. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember rewatching it through adult eyes being like, this story sucks, but it's like the story isn't what makes this movie. It's, you know, it, it may just be nostalgia driven. Like, uh, like you mentioned, Dan, that it's like, we watch it and it's like Christopher Reeve is Superman. Like, I don't know how many times I saw that when I was researching uh, the quiz is it's like Christopher Reeve is Superman. I mean, as much as I love how much work Henry Cavill put into being Superman, and let's not kid ourselves, him walking out of the water um, with tattered <laughs> clothes and but little else uh, in mm. Man of Steel. Mm, like, there's that visual. Yeah. My eyes are closed. Hang <laughs> yeah. on a second. I mean, Christopher Reeve put in some hours at the gym but uh, Henry he put Cavill, on like 25 pounds of muscle for this role, too, which is impressive. But then you see Henry Cavill like, yeah. hmm, yeah, powered by our human Earth sun. Indeed. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but it's right. the mannerisms and everything else that Chris or, jo or Christopher Reeves did, even to make it his own and come out of the shadow of George Reeves. I, I, I'm like, I feel like a kid again, just being excited to see this film. Mm -hmm. Oh my god! Yeah. I I want to say like for our generation, going or right for the current generation of superhero films, like the big moment that made us all smile. And almost brought us back to our childhood days was the end game scene where all the Avengers, all the Marvel, oh, yeah. yeah, the portal scene, the portal scene in Endgame. Whatever your thoughts about that movie, that scene is chills. That scene is goosebumps. The second Falcon says "On your left," and the portals start opening, it's like, oh my god! <laughs> like, Dude, yeah, I'm getting chills thinking about it. Yeah, but yes. I've I've heard stories from, including you know my my uncle or my aunt when who would you know they grew up reading superman comics and watching the original george reeves show and they used to show superman flying if they the cartoons could show him flying all the time but the movies and the tv shows they would hide it like george reeves like was, was clearly kirk suspended allen. in the kirk allen serials well, kirk, kirk, Al allen. kirk allen when they animated him yes but like george yeah. reeves would do a little thing where like he just bounced out of a window and yeah. And then when they did show George Reeves flying, he's very clearly laying on something while they're just moving like a sky yeah. film thing around him. So it was like very clearly him not flying. And it didn't look real. Even back then, it didn't look real. But my, my aunt and, and my uncle and my, would, would tell me like when they went to the theater, the scene where he catches the helicopter in Lois Lane and he says, I've got you, ma'am. She goes, who's got you? And it shows him flying straight up that building. That was their end game moment. That was like, oh my God, Superman's flying. Mm -hmm. Like, and that was, that's exactly how we felt with end game. Like when it showed all of those superheroes mm -hmm. with their power, with their powers, with their costumes about as close as they could possibly get to the comics using the powers that they have in the comics to them. That was their end game scene. Like, oh my God, Superman's flying. Yeah, so we talk about Josh. You were talking like you know this. This is so corny. This is lame. Like no, it they were. It was a mark. They were marking their targets. Like this is a geek moment. We are going to make these kids geek. You know, Lex Luthor like destroying the West Coast because he's a villain. Oh yeah. Yeah, oh, it yeah. makes no sense. But you know who fucking cares? That's what the audience wants to see. Uh -huh. Lex Luthor being a dumb super villain because evil and Superman stopping him. Yeah. Yes. But we've given some expectations. We've said all we can really say about this. We've even given some trivia. But imagine, Josh, you got to know what some other people thought of this film, right? Ooh. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So 
I scoured the IMDb for the reviews. I skimmed off the top. I scraped from the bottom of the barrel, and I sampled the GUI Center to find the best reviews for tonight's quiz. And similar to my last quiz, and the one that Dan so unabashedly borrowed, the topic of tonight's quiz will be, Improved of course, on. Superman. So, welcome to Reeve, Routh, or Cavill. <laughs> you get to uh, figure out if, this, if the review is of one of the three big-budget introductions of Superman. Each review is either from Superman the Movie, Superman Returns, or Man of Steel, each representing a new actor donning the cape. And since Dan was the gracious loser last week, Dan gets to go first. Hooray! Like how I spun that around? I did, I did. That's good, that's good. You're, you're learning. I started it. <clears throat> I improved upon it, though. No, you, like, Microsoft it. Anywho. But like you I said, I, improved upon it. So I improved upon it, and I was able to sell it to the masses. I wouldn't say that the Microsoft Windows was an improvement. And now I make millions on patches. <laughs> worth more? No, actually, Apple's worth more than Microsoft. But anywho, um, I will say that uh, I could have cheated tonight. Like, when I was going through and reading reviews, the, the one review is, I'm a huge Superman fan, was like every third review. No, check that, every second review. <laughs> or uh, finding the quote... Chris Reeve is Superman. That would have been cheating because the answer would have been yes. So, Nigel, All question right. one goes to you. This review is by Clyde Stuff. In order to resolve a plot situation, which, if left as it would have caused major problems for the subsequent sequel, the writer, director, or somebody has Superman perform a stunt that reeks of lazy filmmaking. I'm going to say Man of Steel. Okay, so... Refresh my memory. What what are our three choices here? You got the big budget introductions to Superman, Chris okay. Reeves Superman, Brandon Routh Superman Returns, Henry Cavill Man of Steel. It's one of those three movies. Brandon Routh. You're both wrong. Superman the movie. Wow. Because they were talking about him spinning around the Earth. Oh, you know what? Yeah, yeah. God damn it. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> I thought it was like the airplane scene from. Or like the uh, the fact that he has a kid in returns. Yeah, okay. I thought it was the heaps and heaps of destruction that's caused in Man of Steel. Mm. So uh, do either one of you want to take a guess on what he got? For no points, obviously, because you both got it wrong. I'm gonna say four stars. Uh, I think Nigel's got it with four stars, but um, I'm gonna say six stars. Tom, you got it on the head. That was a six-star review. Oh, no shit. So I get two points for that, right? I, you guys both got it wrong, so no points for that. Damn it. Damn it. All right. So, Tom, to you, question two. Okay. This was written by Bridge the Third. Overall, this was my first introduction to Superman, and it is still my favorite. Oh, God. Oh, God. Okay, so I'm going to have to say first Superman. It's got to be, um, yeah, Chris Reeve. I'm going to say Brandon Routh. Nigel got that one. That was Superman Returns. You know what? Everyone foo-foo's Brandon Routh, but I saw him in um, Legends of Tomorrow, and it's like, oh, my God, he is a Clark Kent. He is just tip-to-toe Clark Kent. I loved his take on Superman. I won't I did, too. That. I did, too. I, I, I have problems with the movie as a whole, but... Absolutely no problems with his portrayal of no. Superman or Clark Kent. We'll, we'll talk about that one if yeah, and when we ever get to it. Yeah. yeah. So, do either one of you take a whack at what uh, rating this uh, guy gave Superman Returns? Nigel? Eight out of ten. Damn, I was actually going to say that thing, too. I'm going to say nine out of ten. It was an eight. Woo-hoo. Damn it again. Man. It's got to be like oh. double points, right? Triple points? <laughs> Quadruple well, points? Well, if no. he can give me any points in the last one. <laughs> mm. No, this is for fun. But uh, no, it's for winning. So winning. Nigel is, is in the lead with one point. So question three for Nigel. Jerry Zegger, Zegger says, hands down, there may never be another perfect actor to bring Superman to life so beautifully the way he did. This almost sounds like it's Christopher Reeve, but it makes me think somebody might think this is Henry Cavill too. <sighs> but I am going to go with my gut and say Reeves. The Superman 78. Thompson? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, this sounds like a deceptive one, so I'm going to have to say Ralph. And Nigel with the point. That was about Chris Reeve. I almost thought, I almost thought it was deceptive too. I'm like, 
Not that I don't like Henry Cavill. In fact, I'm, I was pleased as punch when I found out he's going to get another crack at being Superman. But this almost sounds like it sounds like it's supposed to be Reeve, but I'll bet it's Henry Cavill. So yeah, awesome. it was too. Yeah. It was too obvious. That's why I didn't think. Okay. Yeah, and, and that's also, honestly, I almost didn't pick this one because I felt like it was too obvious, and I'm like, no. You know yeah. what? I always do that. Like with the when I did True Grit, I did the John Wayne one, and it was the remake on that one. So I was like, I'm gonna go ahead and just give this one in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And by the way, my score guess, I'm thinking it's about a nine. I'm Nigel? gonna say a perfect ten. Damn, Nigel, you're on it. It was a ten star review. <laughs> he he was ready for this movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So it's two to zero. Nigel's favor. Now, Thompson, this one's for you. Question number four. SSJ Annie fan, which, you know, anybody knows this means Super Saiyan anime fan. Of course. Says, by the time Superman finally shows up, I'm too bored to care about the rest of the film because everything else has been wasted. Oh, shit. That could really play into any of them. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say Man of Steel. I'm also going to say Man of Steel. Oh, and you are both wrong. Oh. Whoa. Let me guess, Ralph? Thompson, you want to take a take two? Um, I'm going to say Reeve now, because, yeah, it does take him a while to be uh, soups in that film. So, Reeve. Yep, it was uh, Superman the movie. Wow. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, Tom's right, though. It could have applied to any of them, because it, could have. it takes about a half an hour on average for Superman oh, to show up. 45 minutes, I think, on, on an average 45 minutes for him to show up as a Superman in each of the films. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, they show powers before then, but it takes about 45 minutes for him to don the suit. Yeah. All right, yeah. so it's still Nigel's favor. Two to zero. Question number five goes to uh, Dan. Now, Titan Larsius says, Actually, I don't really care about any of the characters either, except for Superman himself. Zero character development. I'm going to guess Man of Steel again. Oh, that's absolutely Man of Steel. Damn, both nailed that one. Finally! Man! That was Man of Steel. I felt like that was the gimme. <laughs> yeah, that was like no character character development. Yeah, which is right. true. No one but Man, Superman gets character development in that movie. Yes. All right. So, for the tiebreaker, Nigel, what did Titus Larsius give this movie? Can you read it again? Actually, I don't really care about any of the characters either, except for Superman himself. Zero character development. I'm going to say four stars. Um, but um, I feel and sense a but in there. What did you say your your guess was, Nigel? Four. Shoot. I'm going to say three. Well, Nigel, you just had a shutout quiz. Ah. <laughs> four star ah. on the dot. You guys nailed it tonight, guessing uh, scores. Well, I mean, as someone who's seen all three of those movies multiple times, yeah. I'm just kind of like, <laughs> I know the beats of all of them, so. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, my Lord. Oh, some of those ones about Man of Steel, though, it's like, mm. I will admit, there was one review um, that I did not get to use that I felt I really wanted to because it was a Superman Returns review. And it was, uh, it was a one-star review. DPOGU21 said, If you're a Superman fan and you really want to see this movie, just bend over and have someone kick you in the balls and you'll get about the same experience without having to waste two hours of your time. Wow. That's a man of steel. <laughs> I already Holy said it was a Superman Returns. But it, it so applies to man of steel. That some that's... regards it can, but that was a one star review for Superman Returns. I, I have to admit, Superman Returns is a boring ass film on in, in scenes Superman's not in. Yes, agreed. like he like at least in Man of Steel in scenes where Superman's not there, things are happening and whatnot. And even in this one, Superman seventy eight stuff's going on. But like in every scene of Man of, or Superman Returns that Superman's not a part of, I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I, I'm just like, I, in fact, when I watch it now, I kind of have a tendency to just fast forward to the next Superman. Yep, scene. that's about how it is. Well, that's I, I would, all the I, Superman films, yeah, really. I start, I, mean, I no, because I'll watch Man of Steel all the way through because I really like the opening with Krypton and all that. And I'll watch this one all the way through because I, one, I like the opening again on Krypton and I, I like the development getting to Superman. It's just Man of Steel. I have a tendency to start the movie when he catches the plane. Yeah, that's you basically fast forward to that one. <laughs> yeah. There's this other quote from this uh, from one of the movies here. Um, 
Tell me if you can know which one this one's from. Tom, play the music. Look! Up in the sky! It's a bird! It's a plane! No! It's the fire pit! And welcome back to another super heroic episode of The Fire Pit. I am, as always, your interspersal host, editor, and strange visitor from another planet, Tom. Disguised as a mild-mannered podcast editor, I fight for truth, justice, and the way to the snack bar. And thank you for flying high into the hero's journey with us. We finally made it to our home on the third planet from the sun. And let's say we see if our team ever managed to get a superhero guest star for their show. All right, um, just let me finish adjusting these microphones, team. Again, Mr. Enforcer, I cannot thank you enough for coming back and agreeing to do this interview, Mr. Enforcer, sir. <sighs> okay, please, it's just Enforcer. And, and think nothing of it, okay? A hero goes where he's needed, wherever that may be. Still, it's a shame we couldn't get Dan. I know he's a good friend of yours, but, you know, Dan, he's late again. Hell, not even here, just as usual. You Sorry, know, sir. Uh, nah, I, uh, I actually passed him on the way in. He said something about the chief riding him about getting a superhero for the guest spot. Uh, so uh, he said to get started without him. We're friends, you know. Oh, uh, all right. Tom, are, are, are we about ready? Hey, right, uh, just let me check the levels real quick. Two, 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 two. Testing one, two. Testing one, two. How now, brown cow? Yep, we're good. Let's do this. <laughs> oh, holy shit. It's that butcher guy again. It looks like he's on a giant robot spider now. Oh, yeah. I forgot about him. Wait, has he been here this whole time? Hmm. Maybe I should go deal with that. <laughs> Tom! Tom! Get the damn camera! Start recording! I'm on it! I'm on it! Oh boy! We're ready to go! This is gonna be awesome! And we're clear! Damn you, Enforcer! I'll get you next time! Oh. My. God. That. Was. Amazing. Oh my god, it's been three hours? And seriously, Mr. Enforcer, sir, thank you for staying on afterwards and doing that interview. Oh, it wasn't a problem. I was happy to. Oh, I just, that fight was epic. I just feel honored to have been able to witness it. I, it was like being in a high budget superhero film. No words, just no words i'm shaking i'm literally shaking look at me tom i'm shaking i, I, I feel it i can see it oh I'm my shaking. god <laughs> <laughs> well thanks for having me on guys but i have to get going good luck i honestly think this was our best episode ever i didn't think it would be that good but oh my god yes chief is just going to flip her shit guys i'm here we can we can start the episode now Dude, where the hell were you? Enforcer, like, just left. You're too late. What? Oh, shoot. That's just my luck. Well, I hope I didn't miss anything good. <laughs> well, Dan, you're just going to have to listen to the episode to find out. Why is the recording light on? That means it's off, Dan. Duh. Oh, my God. Tom, you fucking didn't record him. You missed the whole thing. Dan, Tom's right. When the light is off, it's on. God. Yeah, see, I'll show you. See, just like. Ooh, you gotta hate when those technical difficulties get you. But if you want to be sure that no technical difficulties stand in your way, or if you just want to fill in that silence with some good words, feel free to email us at curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. That's curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. Just be sure to put fire pit in the subject line, as well as what you're emailing in regards, whether it's for an ad, a recommendation, the weakness of your arch nemesis, 
the location of the villain's lair. And let us know what you have. Then we'll race it to our editor-in-chief. Send it over to the presses. Get it to the print. Read it. Then use it to pad our glassware when we move to our new apartments. Because who actually responds to newspapers? Am I right? That email again is curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. Capital C, capital C, capital E, capital I at gmail.com. And I better get back to the episode before they start wondering why their interspersal host and Tom are never in the same room at the same time. Thank you all for listening, and as always, good luck! Whoosh. And now to check on the team to see how they're enjoying their movie. Oh, oh, I need a towel. I don't have a towel. Oh, fuck me. That still gets me hard. I know, right? <laughs> oh, man. I'm not muting while I do it, guys. Tom, don't edit that out. <laughs> its name is Superman. Look at these credits. They last really long today. We're going to watch them all and read their names. That's the super names. We got super names. We got great names. We got Terrence Stamp as General Zod. We're contractually obliged to have this credits before the movie even starts. Yes. Here I I turned up my headphones so I don't have to listen to them. Hey, Tom. Remember that one time that we were talking about what they should have done to Man of Steel and then you basically wrote the plot for Superman and Superman 2? Because you're all like, what they should have done is they should have introduced Zod at the beginning of Superman of Man of Steel and then had brought him back as the sequel as the main villain. We, we ended up being like, dude, that's literally the original films. I still <laughs> hold to it. We sentence you, forcing you into a regeneration. You'll lose your form, Doctor. Wrong franchise. Shit, shit, my bad. Jesus Christ, I am definitely not as smart as these people are supposed to be, but that does not sound safe. It's like, I remember reading when, like, Haiti had that, uh, like, 8.5 earthquake or whatever it was. Yeah. That shifted the Earth's orbit by 0. .02 something. Yeah, mm -hmm. shifting orbit's still not good. Marlon Brando, really phoning in that $7 million paycheck. I was today years old when I realized Marlon Brando's got the Superman spit curl. Holy mm. shit! Oh my god! I, I have just... seen this movie a hundred times if I've seen it once, and I just now noticed that. Meanwhile, Joro's like, I wonder if I designed that ship for re-entry. Re-what? <laughs> nothing. Nothing. Don't worry, it's just us shifting our axis. It's completely normal. Joro was right. It was a bad idea to make our society out of glass. <laughs> I was going to call out the train, but then I noticed the last two cars had uh, windows in it. Yes, in a movie where someone can outrun a train, we're calling out the train itself. Yes, yes. being inaccurate. It's what we do, isn't it? Well, hey, the Cheerios, Cheerios box Cheerios box has barely changed since the 70s. Well, I was going to call out your product placement that you, you mentioned. Oh, earlier. yeah, right, right, yeah. You notice how conveniently she was holding that chair? Yeah, oh, right here, look, too. Right, look at it, it right like there. Right at the camera. Might as well be fucking framed. Dude, it's like lit up. It's like the only mm -hmm. thing that's yeah. lit up on the table. But God, that's to the... Right there. there it is. Whoa, wait, it even shifted. <laughs> Holy shit. Even Cheerios wants to see Superman walk away. And remind us for the great taste of Cheerios. Made from oats. Part of a, whole, a, a well-balanced yeah. breakfast. Yep. See, people? As, Product it, placement existed in the 70s. That yeah. is not an invention from the 90s. What a dick. He's like almost a half mile away from his house. He could have, he hurt, you know, he hurt his mom walking out to see him, but he just stands there gazing off into that empty horizon like you do in Kansas and just letting her walk up. And then it's like, I got to leave. Now you got to walk back all the way over there, mom. Are you sure you don't want to like carry me over, son? I mean, for you, it's like you can just speed off. I'm, I'm 70. <laughs> my feet hurt. My ankles hurt. My hips hurt. Do you have any idea how long of a walk this was? I need to lie down now. It's the great all-powerful Oz. Uh, now look at the man behind the curtain. Would you like to know how to navigate your browser? <laughs>
Would you clear my internet history? I am dead. It, look, it looks like you're trying to save a file that's already got a name. Oh my god, my dad's paperclip. Oh no! How do I disable? 50 minutes in. You gotta be wondering if at this moment the audience is kind of like Ian Malcolm in Jurassic Park. It's like, uh, are there gonna be any dinosaurs? In your dinosaur park? <laughs> At this point, like, is the audience going, is there going to be Superman in your Superman movie? How did he build all that? He's it's the greatest Luther. criminal mind greatest of our criminal... time. God damn it, Danny B. <laughs> hey, Ghostbusters. Who are you going to call? Uh, okay, this is uh, clearly outside of our jurisdiction. You should call the fire department. <laughs> you say some guy in a blue suit and a red cape caught them? None of this is admissible in court. <laughs> that was symbology right there, guys. The fire with the, the flaming bush. I, I got that, too. Because Superman is Jesus? Yes, we got that, Josh. We, we got it. You know, Jesus, if you translate it through all Man, the layers... Man, the Daily Planet must not pay well. It's not you can get to Timex watch. <laughs> you were saying, Josh, though, about... Uh, uh, daily planet well, thank you for this platform well and jesus is actually in hebrew is yeshua and if you uh pronounce if, if, i gotta if, pee <laughs> <laughs> oh god i hate this inner dream yeah i hate this part uh, too this uh, actually they recorded her singing this originally so apparently it was worse than this but also, a random fact, they actually got someone to sing this poem, and it actually made the Billboard charts. No. It made, like, the top 100. No. I'm not kidding you. Ugh. I looked this up. I mean, it wasn't Margot Kidder singing it, but someone sang this poem, and it was a chart topper. Oh, well, I guess Carter had also been elected president at this point in time, so I guess anything was possible back then. It's like, hey, is, is uh, the new guy... The new oh guy just jumped God! out the window. The new guy just jumped out the window. Again? He was just talking to the chief, then he snuck out and jumped out the window. Holy shit, the new guy turned into Superman! You guys gotta check it out! <laughs> yes, I have saved everyone and there's nothing else for me to do. Wait, hang on. Oh god, I knew I forgot something. <laughs> My oven is on! God damn, you beat me to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this right here. Keep my this is like the Zod neck snapping. This is like you're watching this back in the day as a kid who grew up in the 50s and 60s. Like, but but Superman always saves Lois Lane. Darker and edgier. Lois Lane is dead. Yeah, but he undoes it. So it kind of lessens shh, the impact. Shh, shh, shh. She's dead. And nothing can be done to save it. Ever. I also just realized at the beginning of the movie that Zod was trying to make Jor-El an offer he couldn't refuse. Ah! Is that a Godfather reference? Because I'm like, yeah, drawing a blank. Yeah. Okay. I get that reference. <laughs> and now, back to the episode. Does that mean people died when the dam exploded? But you know what? Lois didn't die. And what really matters is hitting that tail in the second movie. The we made $120 million. <laughs> Speak. Okay. So. We start on a planet long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. The planet Krypton. We had a great, great scientist named Jor-El, played by Marlon Brando, who helped catch a bunch of Kryptonian criminals. And everyone was really happy about that. But, you know, as smart as a scientist he was, and he was the world's smartest scientist, you know, he just was not right about that whole climate change, you know. It's clearly, you know, just was an axis tilt and not the planet flying into their giant red sun. And he's like, okay, I'll die with all of you morons. Wink. And so he went to his uh, wife and um, said, hey, you know, I built this spaceship. It's big enough for a kid. I promised on your behalf and my behalf that we would stay behind and die. No, 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 baby, baby, baby. 
I made a promise. So he sent their son, disregarding his wife, to the calm, rational planet of 1950s America. Most importantly, the most progressive part of the United States of America, Kansas, where he's found by Jonathan and Martha Kent, who uh, raised him up to be the world's fastest runner in all of Kansas, so fast that he outran his own dad's lifespan. Jonathan dies of a heart attack, and Clark's like, you know, Ma, I know you're single running a whole farm by yourself, but I'm out. You know, my dad said I got nothing else. So he goes off to the North Pole, builds um, Santa's workshop, and studies with Space Dad Jarrell for like, what, 20 years? I mean, who cares about college? And he shows up with a whole new suit, a fancy dude look, and boom, he's in Metropolis. He's got a job at the most important newspaper in America, despite having no experience or college or anything else. And he meets Lois Lane, played by Marco Kidder. There is absolutely no chemistry because at this point he is awkward, bumbling Clark Kent. In the interim, between all this wonderful tomfoolery, is the world's greatest criminal mastermind, Lex Luthor, who is coming up with the world's dumbest land grab in all of history where he's going to blow up part of California so he has what he thinks is going to be seaside property. That whole plan is going on and Superman is none the wiser as he is saving Lois from a falling helicopter and guessing her panty color and saving the president of the United States from a lightning attack on Air Force One. Anyways, he's doing all that. Meanwhile, Lex is like, hey, you know what would be really smart? Telling the guy with laser vision my plan. Even though he had no idea what I was doing, he tells Superman his plan. But much like Ozymandias, he exacted his plan 10 minutes ago. He's launched nukes towards the San Andreas. He's also discovered Superman's weakness is his own planet's rock. Even though that makes no goddamn sense. He almost drowns him, but Tess Mocker, his assistant, is thirsty as hell. She backstabs Lex. He goes to save everyone, and everyone's saved, except Lois, because she dies and is crushed to death. And so Superman does super backspinny Superman powers, reverses time, saves Lois, probably lets everyone else die, and then he sends Lex and all of his minions, well, actually just Otis, Tessbacher never gets sent to jail, and but sends him to jail, and he flies off into the sunset into a much better sequel, and they all live happily ever after the end. So, how was that, guys? Was that pretty decent? Well, if I wasn't to sleep already, that definitely put me to sleep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, you know what? For that, Josh, I'm going to let Dan give his final thoughts. Dan... What are your final thoughts? This might be the worst superhero movie of all time. <laughs> no, no, actually, um, I'm still, I still love this movie. I, I know that there's bits and parts of the plot that just aren't make sense. Like we talked about Lex Luthor making the seemingly illogical giant leap that for some reason, because Superman is not raised on Krypton, meteorites from his own home planet would hurt him. Like, he, there's no way he would know that. Just just know it. He wouldn't just know it. Um, he only knows it because the script says, well, Lex Luthor has to know that. That's one. And then there's a couple of other bits that are just kind of weird, like the, the whole spin around the Earth and, and make things go backwards. Like, how did he save everybody else? Like, the other stuff still would have happened. And if you could do that, why didn't you just go back before Lex launched the nukes in the first place? So comic it, book logic. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, again, it's a comic book movie and we're talking about a movie about a man that flies and, and has laser vision and x-ray vision and all this other stuff. So you, you okay, my suspension of disbelief is not gonna just stop at that. But there's still so much about this movie to just love. There's the awe and the wonder of the movie. Some of the special effects still hold up to this day. It's not like watching Star Wars. Like, yeah, you can see the 1977 special effects in play, but uh, there's still a lot of, like, the practical effects still really hold up. Um, and that makes it a little bit of an easier watch. 
um, because it's not all in front of green screens or blue screens, and it's not all computer animated and computer generated. So the setting and the outfits and the clothing and the the cars and stuff that dates the movie, but the special effects don't really date the movie that much. Like it's they, they, a lot of them still hold up. Um, is Superman's flying as convincing as it is in Man of Steel or even Superman Returns? No, but it's still good. It's still really good. I love the acting in this movie. I love the characters, and I especially love Christopher Reeve as Superman and Clark Kent. He is still, to this day, the best one ever on screen of portraying both of them differently, but the same person. Bumbling, stumbling Clark who is just your mild-mannered reporter, total white bread, full all this other good stuff, and then he's Superman, and he's so good at just changing his mannerisms. Like he, I mean, he even does it like when he takes off his glasses, he just immediately put, pulls his shoulders back and stands up straight because he's Superman. But the second those glasses go back on his face, he slouches and he changes his speech and mannerisms, and he becomes Clark Kent. And he's so flipping good at that. It's so mm -hmm. awesome to watch it. And to add to that, Nigel, when he goes from, like, jovial, just Boy Scout Superman to, no, seriously, you fucked up, Superman. Yeah, yeah, he's really good at just body language, just showing you the different nuances of Superman's character, which, honestly, in the 1970s comics, he didn't really have. Christopher Reeve brought an element to Superman that didn't really exist before, but now we see it. I'm going to pass it off to you, Tom, in just a second, but I can see now why, you know, and, I, and I've always been able to see it, but I really can see why, even to this day, this portrayal of Superman is the benchmark by which all other Supermen are measured on. Even the animated Superman are, are based on, are measured against Christopher Reeve version of Superman. It almost should be called the Reeve scale now, like when you're Superman. How close did you get to Reeve, or did you make the character your own, or something like that? So, <laughs> yeah. Let's so, not try to coin a phrase here. We saw how that went last time. <laughs> I don't want to jump all over everyone else's thoughts, so I will get to Tom. Uh, well, I'm I'm trying to be the devil on this one. I'm trying to be the Lex Luthor and find the ways to diss on Superman. Everything you said in terms of character portrayal and its special effects. I mean, yeah, there are parts that are corny, but I mean, come on, that's we're forty some plus years, fifty some plus years away from when this came out. This was state of the art back then. Hell, we're looking at film special effects from like 10 years ago and going like, oh, that's so dated. So I'm not going to hold that against it. It's the story that I'm going to focus my judgmental eye on, whether it's for the worst or the best. I, I don't know how to judge the story on this. It was... I mean, there wasn't much that happened in this film, really. There were, like, a few decent parts, but it middled, it piddled. We judge a lot of films today, especially the um, um, Amazing Spider-Man and The Mummy, especially, where it feels like it's building towards another film it's just setting everything up like hey hey this thing right here we'll get to that later but you worry about in the next film but uh, but they never really build on that this skirts that line in a lot of ways especially with um zod and the kryptonians nothing really happened in this film and i don't know if it's because it was a different era but then I can't judge it on the different era. This came out after Star Wars and Jaws. So they there was that era of post Jaws and Star Wars Hollywood. So they had that going for it. Nothing really happened. I still love this film. Don't get me wrong. I was still entertained. Especially because I had you and Josh to watch it with me. And I knew I was with friends watching it. That's what it was. But on a cynical side. On a critical side. This was almost not fan wanky, but it skirted that line. I love that it took its time with the origin and let you just enjoy it. And the parts when Lois died and they, they went quiet and let you as the audience feel that as well as Superman. It wasn't like modern superhero films. It has to throw in a joke no matter what. So I'll give it that credit. It knew when to play itself seriously and when to have fun with itself 
most films don't do that. But it was wanky. It was kind of pandery. And it could have been more than it was. But what it was was a comic book film. It knew its audience and it knew to play to it. So I'm not going to say it was a bad film because of that. It was a comic book film for a comic book fan base. And it succeeded admirably. So I'm still smiling at the end of it. My uh, cynical side aside, I still enjoyed this, and I thought it succeeded. And I now turn to Josh, who is still, I hope, is still awake after all that. Josh, did I bore you to sleep? Um, Dan, is Tom's final thoughts usually that long and boring, or is it just me? They usually are that long and boring. It's just that tonight you're tired. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, Tom. But uh, it did feel longer than usual. But that's probably because it is a journey-ending film, though. So we'll yes. we'll we'll yes. go with that. And it's Superman. Come on, Josh. It's Superman. Yes. What are we talking about? Superman. Come on. I'm sorry. So I'm... I thought it was kind of weird whenever my grandma and I was cooking with Lois, and then Jimmy Olsen came out and started macking on. Lo- I wait. That might have <laughs> not have been the movie. I'm kidding. What? Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, um, it is like almost 3.30 in the morning, so you'll have to forgive me if I sound tired. No, it's like I, I got to like kind of touch base on what you said, too, about the story. I like this movie, but I don't think this movie would do well in today's market. And I think, Dan, how much did you say it would have made? Like over $500 million? That's if you adjust for inflation, uh, roughly. A little more, and, uh, actually, about 520 I would honestly call Superman Returns almost a scene-for-scene scene remake of this film with little difference, you know, like the uh, 2006 flair. And that made less than half of that. It, it mm-hmm. barely pulled in over $200 million. I only know this because I remember watching the box office day-to-day and praying that it would make over $200 million so we'd get a Superman sequel that never came. No, we got blasted by Pirates of the Caribbean 2. Oh, yes, we yeah. did. Hardcore, we got blasted, so we never got to see a sequel to, to uh, Superman Returns. Like they rolled up all of the costs of all the failed Superman movies into the budget of that film. There was like three or four Superman movies that made it like to the point where they were paying people to start designing and whatnot. The one Superman Lives starring Nick Cage. The budget for Superman Returns was huge. The uh, payoff for it was less than half of the adjusted for inflation of Superman 78. So this story did not work well in modern cinema. Everything leading up to the end when Lex Luthor starts monologuing is good. But then everything after that feels forced and rushed, at least story-wise. I'm not going to disparage any of the actors acting. I think they all did a fantastic job. I definitely took note of uh, the villains more in this one. Lex Luthor, Ned Betty. I think their performances were outstanding. In terms of the story, it was incredibly weak. I think that we would would uh, rail on this movie if it was a modern movie, especially the ending. Like I know I've said this a hundred times. You can give me a great movie with a bad ending, and it's going to be a bad movie. So it's like I watching this movie, I realize how much of it is actually nostalgia-fueled. I think if I came out of the theaters today watching this movie, I don't know, I'll be honest, I'll probably say what I like. It has Superman on it. Superman, or milk tastes better coming out of a Superman glass. So I, I'll be, if I'm being completely honest with myself, I would still love this movie because Superman is in it. But if any other superhero, I would be like, that sucked. Why did I pay money for that garbage mm-hmm, in terms mm-hmm. of the story? Still, Chris Reeve, his performance is just stand out. Everybody else in this. And like you said, Tom, I can't disparage the special effects. It's a 42-year-old film. And actually, it was 42, the anniversary, the 42 second anniversary was this past yeah, week, we, day. Yeah, Monday or Tuesday, when, maybe Wednesday. Oh, but, wow. Did we actually almost record this on the anniversary? Almost, yeah. That's why we picked it for this journey, because it was yeah. almost on the anniversary of the movie release. It was one of the few superhero films, especially back then, and I'm probably wrong on this, released in December. Like I said, I would, I'd probably still love this movie regardless, but because Superman... <laughs> I'm thinking myself now, but uh, yeah, I think the story is definitely the weakest aspect of this. Special effects are awesome. Acting is awesome. Yeah, that's all I got. Well, I don't think we can really disparage the story or anything else like that. One, it was also the time it was made, 1970s, and it was pretty edgy 
first time yeah. as we go to watching. I mean, Lois Lane dying? Superman couldn't save her in the end? Like we talked when we were watching the film, like that's the Zod neck snapping. This yeah. was and for its I, time, yeah. Yeah, but the, okay, the only difference is the only difference is the Zod's neck snap, for better or for worse, is still there. They didn't walk it back and he doesn't undo it at the end of Man of Steel. That's where, like Josh mentioned, the ending was kind of weak. And I feel like this one, the ending is kind of weak. Either kill Lois or don't. I hated the fact that they undid the death because that just cheapened the whole part. And the fact that he saves her with basically deus ex machina in having this power of flying backwards or making the earth spin backwards to go back in time, which is not how things work, but whatever. It doesn't ruin the movie for me. Like Tom, I'm going to tell you, like, like like Tom said, I still love this movie, and I will watch it a hundred times after tonight. But it's that ending still bothers me, and it's going to forever bother me. And it's one of the reasons why I don't like the Donner cut of Superman 2. I actually prefer the Lester cut, because as stupid as the amnesia kiss was, at least it was it slightly well it doesn't make any more sense than flying backwards around the earth but no, there's something it wasn't different a rehash of a it wasn't a rehash it wasn't a rehash of something already used and you know like i said okay fine uh, how are we gonna undo lois lane knowing who superman is i know concussion kiss yeah because we can't have like lasting consequences we can't have yeah lois lane in the 1980s knowing who superman is right i mean that will change the dynamic oh right and they, they just, it was the safe thing to do and i just didn't like the deus ex machina but again this was 1970s superman who was still getting not as bad as Golden Age, but Silver Age Superman was still very much getting new powers as the plot demanded. It literally takes a crisis to stop that. Um, but I don't know. Just like we were talking about Superman Returns, I, I recognize that that's kind of a weak film. But there's parts of it I really love. And, and Man of Steel is a weak film, and it's got a shit ton of flaws. But there are parts of that movie I really love. I just wish they could get Superman right like this again. You know, like this is still as much as there's flaws in this film and in Superman 2. I won't yeah, go into three and four because they're awful, but they are good films. And they, I still feel like they haven't yeah. quite captured Superman like they did back then. Like They, they still definitely get him. Superman right in mm -hmm. this film. If we look at it objectively, even with all this film's flaws, they get Superman in this film. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. He, bro he has brooding moments in this film, mm -hmm. too, but he's not overly broody. He doesn't need to be overly broody. Batman's the broody one. And that's where like they get things, especially not so much a man of steel, but they really got it wrong in Batman v Superman, where he's just broody, 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 dark, dark, dark for no fucking reason whatsoever. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In fact, in this one, it almost like it tells the opposite way. It's like Superman almost gets overly like, oh my God, this is great. I yeah. love this. And even Ghost Jorel had to be like, okay, calm yeah, and, down. and even Jorel, Jorel pulls the reins on it, but you think Jorel's going to tell him not to do this anymore. You can't save people. And Jorel says, no, the hardest part for you is going to be realizing you can't save everybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. eventually, yeah, and then eventually mankind's, they're going to ask you to do things that they can solve themselves. And sure enough, actually, in the sequel, we do see that. Even as bad as Superman 4 is, basically, they ask Superman, uh, take all of our nuclear weapons and throw them in the sun. Mankind's asking Superman to solve problems that mankind should be solving themselves. Now, actually, this I've, I've been nibbling on this one. And Josh, um, agree with me or disagree with me, because... Of all of us, you are the Superman aficionado. You were talking about consequences and living with them. If you're going to kill Lois Lane, kill Lois Lane. I'm just thinking about to Man of Steel and how they killed Zod and they let him stay dead. I actually appreciate that more now that you put that in context, Nigel. I said that. Oh, okay. I thought you were giving that yeah. credit to Josh. I'm like, no, I said no, that. No, no. I wanted, <laughs> I wanted to also get Josh's input on that one, too. But it's like, they weren't cowards about it. Yeah, they like, did it. And they that, didn't deus ex that. Because he kills Zod in the sequel, too. But there's no real consequences to it. And Superman's behavior doesn't change because of it. He never. There's no body in the Superman two. We'll, no, but we'll but he still doesn't. He still people. doesn't have any. He still doesn't have any like change in his character because of it. Whereas killing Zod in the Man of Steel in the DCEU does fundamentally change Superman's character. There's yeah, there's actual consequence. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And but it's like for better, um, for worse. For better, for worse. There's lasting consequences. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, Tom, to talk about that, um, I am glad that I made that point and uh, you took it so well. Did I make that? I, I definitely made that point. Yeah, that was me. That was me. Um, oh, man, I got something in my throat. <laughs> but uh, since I'm making all these points tonight, I, I, I do. I never even thought about not bringing back Lois like upon subsequent rewatches of this film. But no, I think that would definitely have added more weight. Definitely would have changed a lot in the next, uh, in the sequels. Oh, man, that would have been crazy to think about not having Lois Lane in it. Yeah, right? I mean, you would have lost Margot Kidder, but at the same time, that would be, dare I say, incredibly brave of the writers to do in modern cinema. This is a question for both of you. But like, how do you think in the 1970s, going into 1980s time frame, where there was like almost no what we consider now modern superhero films, how do you think they would have took that? Okay, I think I'm it would have. Seen... Oh, Josh first, and then yeah, no, go I... ahead. Yeah, go ahead, Josh. I think that they would have handled a lot better than modern audiences would have. Remember the outcry in uh, 2005 when they finally showed off Brandon Routh as Superman for the first time? How big of a fit the fanboys went because they decreased the size of the shield. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm also thinking about when they revealed the first photos of Henry Cavill in the Superman costume for Man of Steel and the fact that he doesn't have the red trunks on yeah. the, on the oh, blue tights. The, the fucking fanboys, yeah, the fanboys went, but they went more ballistic over the red shorts. They went so ballistic over the fact he's not having, he doesn't have red shorts in Man of Steel. I can't imagine killing Lois Lane. Lois Lane is just as much Superman as Kryptonite and Lex Luthor are. So yeah. killing Lois Lane... If, I mean, I, I, like I said, the fanboys burned down fucking Reddit because he wasn't wearing red shorts. I can't imagine what they would have done if they he'd have killed or they'd have, the movie would have killed Lois Lane for good. Hell, they couldn't handle the fact he killed Zod. He was a bad guy. <laughs> and Zod was and Zod was about to kill a family of four. And you're like, well, I don't know. Roast the kids. I don't give a shit. I, Superman doesn't kill. You're like, wait, no. <laughs> so, yeah, killing Lois. Maybe 1970s might might have handled it a little bit better, probably because you didn't have the internet fanboy culture back then. But yeah, those are my thoughts on it. Dan, what are your thoughts on it? <laughs> the snark is strong with this one. I know. I gotta learn to shut up. <laughs> no, you're excited about this. This is Superman. We're all three excited about this film. I'm wearing a Superman shirt right now. I can't judge. But it's like I was saying, modern audiences threw a fit over. The shield size, darkening up the suit, getting rid of the trunks. I'm amazed they didn't throw a bigger fit about Lois figuring out who Superman was in Man of Steel. Killing off uh, Zod. I don't. I think honestly, it wasn't as established in pop culture back then that people would have easily accepted somebody else. I mean, look at how well '90s audiences accepted Harlequin as a new character in uh, in the Batman uh, Rogue catalog, whatever the fuck they call it, Rogue Gallery. Rogue, you know, Rogue yeah. Gallery. Yeah, mm-hmm. Josh like, is look, sleep deprived. A little bit, but uh, look at how well they accepted uh, Harley Quinn, and she's become like a staple of modern Batman in uh, cinema, right? Yeah, Joker, the old Adam mm. West was like he's got minions, but where's Harley? Exactly, and I think that they would have killed Lois Lane off in this movie, and then in the second one they brought somebody else. That person would be, you know, j- the equivalent of like a Jason Todd or a Tim Drake. Just mm-hmm. the next lowest, so to speak. And I, I think that it would have been a lot more accepting then than it would be now. Well, considering they started the movie off with him, like, pining over Lana Lang. Yeah. And so it could have, like, easily happened. And so you're, you're not wrong. Yeah, I mean, there was always the back and forth in the old days. Lois versus Lana. Who is going to get Clark slash Superman? So, yeah, but I... I I look back and I wish they had made that hard choice. Like, no, Lois is dead and she stays dead. But of course, no studio would have ever signed off on that. Let's yes, I too this. look back for 30, 40 minutes ago and think the same thing. But overall, I mean, I, we're all in agreement that this was at least for all the flaws we're seeing. Or actually, no, I'm going to ask this question because it sounds like we're all in agreement. If this wasn't Superman... We'd probably hate this film. Probably. Yeah, yeah. We'd, probably, we'd probably be a little more harsh on it. I think, yeah. I think we're, 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 if we're going to be honest about our bias, yeah, I think we'd be a little more harsh if it wasn't a Superman movie. 
Yeah. And in fact, I think we'd be a little more harsh even if it was just different, if it was a slightly different superhero. Oh, yeah. yeah like yeah, if this yeah, was yeah. a Wonder Woman movie or something like that. Let's be honest. Our shirts fit better if it's got a Superman symbol on it. Yes. In, in all the right ways, too, we should mm-hmm. emphasize. You stand that... a little taller when you hear the Superman theme. Yes. Tom is so awesome. He's so great. Tom likes to lie to himself. <laughs> all right, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. <laughs> I, I think I've hit all the notes, guys. <laughs> yeah, I think we said what we can say about this film. And uh, at this point, I think you guys are just dragging it on to keep me up longer. We are. Which, we are. We really are. are. Me, so go, that bullet. does it for tonight's episode. <laughs> <laughs> bullet so, by bullet, why Lex Luthor's the best criminal mind of our time. As a reminder, <laughs> you can find us on Spotify, iTunes, and Amazon, or wherever fine podcasts are sold. And be sure to like and subscribe this episode and others as you like and sub- like them. Not subscribe to each of them, but you know what I'm talking about. I'm tired. So <laughs> it does help out the podcast. And if, um, you know, we understand Josh is tired but i want to spend the next 20 minutes talking about lex of course you do (laughs) but 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 honestly actually no because that would take time away from discord because we would be wonderfully happy if you could join us on discord and have some fun interacting with us talking amongst some other geeks and super fans you can suggest movie paths or give us some feedback you could also, if you really want to, like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter. You know, whatever you feel like doing. And if you want to reach out to us old school style, you know, with the emails and those things, we can email us. Mentioned back in the interspersal. Tom mentions it like two or three times, and he even says it really slow, so you can jot it down and send us some email messages. If you want to talk sponsorship, if you want to uh, leave us some feedback there, movie pass sub- submissions, the links to the email and all the social media is in the episode's description at firepit.podbean.com. And I would like to give a special shout out to my son who, unbeknownst to my wife, stayed up with me as late as he possibly could watching this movie with me um, and dealing with my snarky attitude. But, unfortunately, he did not make it, and he is currently passed out about three to four feet away from me. And, um, Rob, shout out to you for agreeing with me on Discord. Well, did uh, Rob d- agree with you on Discord, by the way, for those? Uh-oh. To uh, call the scale of cheesiness in a movie the Alfredo test. Damn, that's a good one. Yeah, shit. That's okay. Okay, yeah. But as I'm agreeing with that one, I'm also going to shout out to one of our latest followers on the Facebook page, Mick. Mick, thank you for joining us on Facebook. And again, I want to shout out to my family who are following us and giving us our input. I also want to give a shout out to John. A friend of mine who's joined us recently. I shouted him out last time, but I want to give him another shout out this time because, well, it's John and I wanted to. And for all the Hi, people, John. and anyone and everyone else on Facebook who's been jo- following us, I promise I will get to you all. You are numerous on Facebook. I can't. It's going to be a while. If I do two or three of you at a time, maybe by our 200th episode, I'll have got to all of you who have joined us in just the past month. That's not an exaggeration, by the way. Thank you all for joining and keeping the fire pits, fires burning. And I'll give a obvious special shout out to Peggy, friend of the channel. Thank you for listening again. Thanks for all the feedback. I'm really glad we make the day a lot easier for you, at least one day of the week. And a special birthday shout out to Danielle. She's on our Discord and she seems to really enjoy the show. She's always giving us feedback, giving us some suggestions, disagreeing with Tom on a lot of things. And that's always great. You know, we we love when people disagree with Tom. And uh, I was going to give a shout out to Rob, but I'm rescinding that because I was his friend first and yet he agreed with Josh. So, Rob, I'm sorry. nothing personal. I just had the better idea. It is personal with me, though. That makes sense. We do know you. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> yes. No, just shout out to everyone on Discord that joins in on the conversation every week. We appreciate it. And yeah, just keep listening. Thanks. <clears throat> so what film are we watching next week? Wait, wait, no, no. We don't know what we're watching next week yet, do we? 
So, Dan, what's our next destination film and journey going to be next? Well, Josh, you know, I got you, babe, but uh, it's going to be brand new because we don't go over the same movies twice. Huh. This kind of feels familiar, doesn't it? Mm, You know what? Just look out for our selection section episode next week. I guess we will. Until then, I've been Josh. And I've been Tom. And I've been Dan. This has been a production of Curtain Call Entertainment, LLC. Good luck out there. What's next for our team? Will Enforcer and Professor Butcher meet again in battle? Or will there be another hey, clash hey, of- Hey, 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 um, dude, the storyline's done. Oh, when am I getting paid? I still haven't got my paychecks yet. You, you haven't? Oh, that's, that's odd. Oh my. They're in the mail. Yeah, we gotta go now, though, so we have to go check on those paychecks. Yeah, yeah, let's go. Come on, let's, we're, we're gonna go down do that now. Let's go. Yeah, well, it's, See you. Oh th- thanks again. Yep. Bye. Uh-huh. What a, See ya. What, what an idiot. Oh, my God. Next week on the fire pit, litigation. We shall see each other again in court. Same fire pit time. Same fire pit channel. 